now joining us, Sumanti Raman. It does appear that by today afternoon itself, Edipati Palayan Swami is going to be crowned the king. He is going to be given the reins of the AIDMK and declared the supreme leader of the party. Yes, I think that uh, this is something which perhaps should have happened on 23rd of June itself. But, uh, you know, due to a court order and so on, it was it didn't happen. Today, I think uh, the decks have all been cleared. Um, so EPS will be the interim general secretary of the party because the general secretary, as per the party's bylaws, should be uh, elected by the ordinary members of the party, all the ordinary members. So that would take some time for the elections to to happen. But um, the EPS will be the interim general secretary of the party. And as far as Mr. OPS is concerned, I think this is the end of the road. Uh, you know, uh, he could, of course, contest all of this in court. But we'll have to wait and see uh, what decision is taken on his future at the party, whether they uh, choose to expel him, uh, which is what is, is uh, quite likely if they leave him continue as the treasurer of the party. It creates a perennial problem for EPS. But um, uh, Mr. OPS's political options have now completely dwindled and uh, Mr. EPS will now be the uh, supreme leader of the AIADMK going forward. Yes, but uh, one really can't expect him to be walking off into the sunset. Willow Pani Salvan really do that. You did say that his political options really have narrowed down. But he isn't someone who's going to be lying low, isn't it? Given the kind of scenario or the pictures that we've seen today, it isn't going to be a pleasant uh, walk down the road for Redipati and Sami. No, I don't think within the party there is going to be any great uh, support for Mr. OPS. And we have seen that. I mean, if out of 2,300, if 2,200 people plus are supporting EPS and 100 people are supporting OPS, it gives you an idea of the, uh, uh, the kind of support that he commands within the party, in the GC. And, uh, you know, there are hardly, outside his Taini district, um, so OPS hardly has any support. So his options are very severely limited. He was hoping at one stage that the BJP might uh, help him by, uh, you know, propping him up. The BJP is not doing that clearly. And uh, therefore, what are his options now? He can join Ms. Tashikala, but she too does not have public support in any significant measure. So there are no options. I mean, that is the singular problem. Had he accepted to serve under EPS, potentially he could have bided his time there would have been people who would have become unhappy with EPS over a period of time, and he could have emerged as a as a leader, uh, uh, you know, of consequence, uh, maybe two years down the line. But by taking this confrontationist approach without support, either within the party or from the BJP, I think he has shot his bolt. I honestly don't see him, um, you know, uh, assuming any significant relevance in the near term. Unless the BJP has a change of heart, which I don't see happening before 2024. Interesting. Uh, you know, Sumanthi Raman, Jailalitha had picked, handpicked rather OPS twice. What does this really mean for the workers and the cadre of the AIDMK? Do they remember this? That OPS was seen somebody largely as the chosen political heir of J. Jailalitha? I think that you also people and the Carter also recognize that he was chosen more for the fact that he would not rock the boat rather than for any great administrative or political acumen. He was chosen because she knew that he would give back the uh, chief minister's chair, uh, you know, when she was ready to occupy it again and that he did not command a mass base. In fact, he was given the post because he did not have most of the uh, qualifications that were needed to be a chief minister. Um, you know, which is a large charismatic um, uh, personality or a great, uh, you know, administrative activism and so on. So I think that uh, that alone does not qualify Mr. OPS to claim uh, the support of the cadre in the party. And we've seen over the last few months how he has been horrendously exposed as not being able to command even half a dozen or more district secretaries out of the uh, 75 uh, uh, party district secretaries. So I think that uh, you know, the, the right approach for him would have been to accept defeat and live to fight another day. He has not chosen to do that. And um, over a period of time, uh, of course, uh, you know, the DMK would be keen that Mr. OPS uh, remains relevant because uh, they want a weekend AIA DMK. Mm. But, uh, you know, more the DMK is easy to be close to the DMK that harms the board because uh, no AIA DMK supporter or a cadre 
would ever accept a leader who is seen to be soft from the DMK. So it's it's his options are very very limited. Uh, and let me be very honest, I honestly cannot, uh, barring a sudden last minute change of heart by the BJP, I can't see Mr. OPS being relevant um, in Tamil Nadu politics. Um, if he, if the AIDMK does choose to expel him. Yes, you mentioned the BJP. The very fact that EPS continues to be close to the BJP might just work in his favor as well in days and weeks to come, isn't it? But see, the, the thing is, the BJP until 2024 wants a united AIADMK which can command at least 25% of vote share because the AI of the BJP wants to ally uh, is already in an alliance with the AIADMK and they want to be able to take 8 to 10 seats from Tamil Nadu in 2024 for the parliamentary election. So they don't want the AIDMK to implode now. So there's no way that they are going to back OPS at this stage. If they were to back him, they would have backed him two weeks ago. He went to Delhi and he tried desperately to meet many senior leaders of the BJP. He was rebuffed. So that itself sent out a strong signal that the BJP at this stage is not willing to uh, back Mr. OPS. And that is why... Uh, you know, none of the leaders who are with EPS even attempted to cross over because they saw the writing on the wall. They saw that he was cut adrift by the BJP and uh, they would not come to salvage or save him, certainly not before the 2024 election. What happens after 2024 uh, is very difficult to predict. But right now, the BJP is certainly not wanting an imploding AIA DMK because they don't have the critical mass to take on the DMK in an electoral fight at this point. Right, Suman so Raman, I'm thanking you for the moment for getting us your perspective on that important story that we are tracking from Tamil Nadu where a war has broken out.